Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. I've got a question for you. Why doesn't the false convert realize, recognize that they are a false convert? Well, right away you'll say, well, Brad, that's, that's kind of easy. And what do, you, what do you think of right away? And these will be in the description box for you. What, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2? Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7? And 2 Timothy 4, uh, what is that, 3 and 4? All right? Right? We kind of know all this. But you know what? I want to get a little deeper into it today because the, the false convert, the repugnance of Christian religiosity, which has created so many false converts that are going to hell, um, We're in the falling away. And you got to remember, the falling away are those who say that they are that they are of us, but they are being manifest that they were never of us in the first place, and they are the ones that are falling away because saved people do not fall away. Never forget that. Okay? Never forget that. Saved people do not fall away. Saved people fall and get messed up in all kinds of things. Yes. But see, the closer that we are getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, brethren, you need to be on your guard. You need to keep your nose in the scriptures and you need to be prepared because what my personal fear is for many of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, is that devastation that is going to come upon so many of you when those who you thought for who, who were years and years and years who were Christians who you thought were of us, but the closer that we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, it gets manifest that they were never of us. And that can be debilitating, devastating to so many of you, especially when it comes close to home for some of you. Hmm? Hmm. So we're going to kind of look at this, but we're not going to hit the obvious things because I want, I'd like us to get a little deep into this today, okay? So please, Get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along, okay? Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Follow me along, okay? Follow me along. Besides, sometimes I do skip a groove. You groove, you know, my, the mouth goes a little bit quicker than the brain, you know? So check me out. Okay, be a Berean. Today is the 1st of February. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Proverbs, chapter 1. Verses 1. On to verse 6. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to, to know wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and instruction. Where do we get our instruction from? The authorized version of the scriptures, okay? To perceive the words of understanding, the words of understanding departing from evil, okay? To receive the instruction of wisdom, fear of the Lord, how to do it. You want to know how to fear the Lord? Read the Old Testament. Okay? <laughs> Justice and judgment and equity. We are to judge. We are to, number one, judge ourselves. And we are to judge others. But how are we to judge ourselves? By the scriptures. Okay? By the scriptures. Paul, he says, I don't judge my, I judge not mine own self. Okay? But it is the Lord that judges us, judgeth us. How does the Lord judge us? Through the scriptures. Okay? 
Paul didn't judge himself because he knew that his own judgment, even though he had the knowledge and stuff, could be faulty because of this, the flesh. Okay? All right? Paul knew that through means of the flesh that he could find a justification for just about anything. And when you get right down to it, that justification of anything. Well, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. That is truth. But some people use that as a crutch to hold on to while they're dabbling in worldliness, which they know the Lord hateth. Hmm. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And see, you see this knowledge. What comes first here in these couple of verses? To know wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, okay? Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, okay? Will lead to knowledge, pure, true knowledge, based upon Scripture. And in that knowledge comes what? Instruction. Justice. Judgment. Okay? And equity. To give, subtle, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. This is all based off of wisdom. The wisdom that is what? The fear of the Lord. There is another wisdom out there that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? That is the wisdom of this world. Okay? A wise man will hear, hear, many people listen. Many people will listen. Our enemies listen. But they don't hear. Okay? There's a difference. Well, perfect example. You who are struggling or not struggling with the enemy on the altar, the television, um, it's background noise, right? You're listening, but you don't hear it, right? Right? You can turn that around, however. Uh, I, I hear it, but I'm not listening, right? But see, our enemies, they listen closely to everything we say. So does the false convert, but they don't hear. It doesn't transcend from here down to here, okay? Or a descent, excuse me. <laughs> a wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding, departing from evil, shall attain unto wise counsels. <clears throat> to understand a proverb and the interpretation the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Here's that thing about dark sayings once again. You know, I will open my, uh, my, I will, what is that? What is that? What is that, brother? I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Dark sayings. Are the scriptures dark sayings? Um, someone who does not have the true light of this world, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the four times that the capital L light appears in the book of John, First John, uh, not First John, John chapter 1, there are four times that capital L light appears, okay? So, the dark sayings, it's not, it's not dark because they are of darkness, but they are dark sayings unto those that do not have the true light of this world, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within them. The Masons, they worship what they call the light bearer, bearer the son of the morning, Lucifer, okay, who is transformed into an angel of light. And it's through that light of Lucifer that these false converts, these lost converts, bathe themselves in and find justification for just about anything. Now we're going to skip a little. Today is the first. Why haven't you read this yet? Now let's skip a little to verse 22 on to verse 30. Because if you were to continue reading, you have to do some of this on your own, okay? You, we are admonished. Uh, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom. Fools who say in their heart there is no God, okay? 
They despise the fear of the Lord and instruction. And instruction comes from where? The scriptures. Through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost. But see unto a false convert. A lost convert. Who reads the same scriptures that we do. Some of these. Especially these King James Bible believing Christians. Okay? Okay? Look at the modern Ruckman camp. The modern Ruckman camp. These, some of these Ruckman... Savages. They're savages. They really are. They really are. Look at some of these King James Bible believing Christians. Look at the easy believism heretic devils who purport to read the scriptures. And some of them actually do. They read the authorized version. But isn't it strange that someone who reads the same scriptures, I not the same because you how are you reading the actual one that I'm reading, right? You smart Alex. <laughs> but they okay, they got the same scriptures we do. Okay? But yeah. They they say they're dispensational. But salvation has always been by faith alone from Genesis unto Revelation. Okay? But yet they're dispensational. Okay? There are some out there who, who read the authorized version of the scriptures. But the Church of the Living God is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Or what do they say? Christians are going through the Great Tribulation. And they're right. Christians are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Yes, they are. But the church of the living God is going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. And they read the same scriptures that you and I do. Okay? The authorized version. All right? Brad, you're saying that people who read other, like the Bibles, aren't saved? A babe who is just brought up in the faith might have, um, might be using a Bible. But the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth will eventually, eventually, it's going to guide you here to the authorized version. Your babe, three, one to three, to even upwards to five years, uh, saved of the church of the living God by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Five years. Okay? You kind of figure by five years, it's like, huh? Come on, man. But hey, 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 hey. You know, that's not the case for everybody. Right? You got to remember that. But you've been saved for how long? 10? 20? 25 years? 10 or 25 years, huh? And um, the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit that dwells in you, supposedly, hasn't opened your eyes on to rightly dividing the word of truth? Well, no, it's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation. Okay. Okay. All right. And, okay, you read the scriptures, right? And yet you've been saved 10, 25 years or something like that. And yet he hasn't revealed to you the truth of the redemption of the purchased possession? No, we're going through the Great Tribulation. Okay, the Great Tribulation does not appear in scripture, okay? Or what's, what's another really, really good one? Um, once saved, always saved. Which is for us today. But see, you arrive at that truth by rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? So, it's natural that if someone doesn't really rightly divide the word of truth, that they would be against eternal security. But yet, we find that the easy believism heretics, such as, Grace Ambassadors, Yankee Arnold. Those are those are easy believism devils. They 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 purport to believe in the authorized version of the scriptures, but yet they're easy believism. Just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Okay. Hmm. And they're saved, and they got the same spirit we do. But yet, but see, easy believism heretics are like once saved, always saved. They they purport to believe in that, yes. But see, they also use that as a justification to live like the devil. 
And then someone like an atheist or someone who's like very like newly saved sees that. It's like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. They read the same, but some of them who uh, adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures will say things like, uh, well, once saved, always saved. You know, a lot of the charismatics are like that. The charismatics that, some of the charismatics that do use the authorized version of the scriptures who are against once saved, always saved. Hmm. And yet some of them have been saved for 10 to 25 years and they're still against eternal security, having the same scriptures that you and I do. Hmm. That's something. And of course, the obvious uh, answers are right there. Yes, but let's get a little deeper to it. Let's get it a little deeper to it. Because for some of you, some of you who have these people who you listen to, you watch, and that you trust, are all of a sudden one day, they're going to be revealed that they were never of us. And you're going to be devastated. I spare you. I spare you. I don't spare you. Let's let the Lord spare you. Okay? Now, in Proverbs chapter 1, let's read verses 22 on to verse 30 now. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Knowledge derived from wisdom, the fear of the Lord, not the wisdom of this world, okay? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour my lowercase s spirit onto you. I will make known my words unto you. Different dispensation. You got to remember, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is obviously our instruction in righteousness, okay? Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Hmm. People want to believe in the, the false Jesus that is offered to them by this repugnant Christianity, this religiosity. Okay? But the actual Christ of the Scriptures, very few want to know him. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Mm. Mm. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh. You reject the Lord long enough. You reject the Lord long enough. And then when you're in your biggest trouble, you go to him. Yeah, this is a warning. This is a warning to you uh, who adhere to religiosity while having the actual word of God in front of you. But yet, see, they're dark sayings to you, aren't they? Aren't they? Oh, you can go ahead and you can get yourself one of them. I don't have any over there. In the box over there, you can get yourself a study Bible. Hmm? You can get yourself a commentary. Huh? I don't recommend study Bibles or commentaries at all. I don't. Not at all. Not at all. The Lord will lead you, guide you into all truth. You know the spirit of truth and the Lord is that spirit? Yeah. See, a lost convert can read the scriptures. And there are some out there who can actually produce sermons who are lost converts using the authorized version of the scriptures. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there is a depth there that isn't there with some of the, with these um, lost converts. There's a depth that is missing. Haven't you seen that yet? When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? Why? For, they, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Now, Christianity tells you, and this is true, that the Lord will take you back. But see, you have to repent. If you are of the church and the living God and you have gotten messed up in the sin, which happens, 
going to talk about that a little later. Okay. Um, Lord, of course, you're once saved, always saved. But see, you living in sin, you living as the world, you're bringing shame upon our Lord. And not only that, you're irritating him. Okay? But someone who clings to this repugnant Christian religiosity, justifying all their carnality and worldliness all along as they go, and that's what the easy believers and devils are very good at, it's like the period they peep these coadjutor devils, like the guy in England who's a lost devil, a coadjutor, an infiltrator, okay? Lives his entire life as a devil, puts on the facade that he's uh, of the church of the living God, really isn't, but then on their deathbed, they're going to repent and go to heaven? No. No. Is it possible? Of course. The impossible is possible with God, yes. Is it probable? No. Is it possible the impossible is possible with God? Yes. Yes, it is possible. It is possible. To say that it isn't, nah. But see, if you live, especially, and see, this is why religiosity is so damning. Why doesn't a false convert recognize or realize that they're a false convert? Because of religiosity. Because of religiosity. Because of religiosity. And then what happens? Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. They will not be left without a witness. And that's you, brother. That's you, sister. Okay? Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand, and their heart, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed, and convert and be healed. What is this talking about? What is this talking about? One of the hardest person, spirit, soul, and body, to witness onto is a religious Christian. Like a Catholic. They're a religious Christian. They're the hardest to witness onto. Because they think that they are saved like you and I. Church of the Living God. And we know we are, like, they, they will be in the description box, the verses that we just mentioned at the very beginning of this video in 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, and 2 Timothy. They will be in the description box for you. But see, when you have religiosity, the mechanics of something that is religious, but not of the faith that was once delivered onto the saints, Religiosity, Christianity, okay? There are other forms of religiosity. That's why on the thumbnail, the Christian religiosity. Science can be a form of religiosity, okay? All right, think about that. Think about Scientology. It's a form of religiosity, okay? Look at Hinduism, a form of religiosity, Okay? All right? Look at the morons and the jehos. Okay? There are different types of religiosity. Okay? So to distinguish Christian religiosity, which is damning so many people to hell. And, you know, the longer one remains in this Christian religiosity, the harder it is for one to come out of it. And that's what some of you have to come to grips with. When you see a loved one who you love so dearly, then all, and then you discover they're a false convert. 
And there and and what happens? You try to talk with them. You try to reason with them. It's like, okay, I do you not have the same spirit? Are we not like minded? Okay, doth not the Lord that live in me also live in you? And and you read the scriptures together, or you read to them scripture, and you try to. It's like, hey, 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 wait a minute, brother, wait a minute, wait a minute. All things are lawful for me. I want to do this. I like this. I like that. Saved people fall. But false converts fall away. While we're in Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 9 on to verse 14. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit, lowercase s, of course, of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And then now the Calvinists will come to that and say, see, that proves uh, election and elect and elect. No, 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 no. No. Remember, it's not at gunpoint. If you choose to boot the door out of the way and to climb up some other way while claiming all the while that you are saved, okay, you are choosing another Jesus. You are not going through the door. Rather, you are booting the door out of the way to establish your own that you want to worship. A Christ who is not the Christ of the scriptures. Like it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 12. Okay? Because they have not received the love of the truth, God shall send them strong delusion. Salvation is not at gunpoint, Mr. Calvinist. Mr. Black Hebrew Israelite, Mr. Uh, British Hebrew Israelite, Brizraelite, okay? Salvation is not at gunpoint. It is not. Okay? It is not. It is not. You got to make the right choices. And when you choose that Christ, which is not the Christ, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Dark sayings. Because the capital L light that appears four times in scripture is not in you to lead you, guide you into all truth. But you are deceived willfully, most of them, which is stupidity, willful ignorance of stupidity, are deceived by that angel of light, Satan, Lucifer. The light that is in, their, in, in them is not that true light. So hence the dark saying, see? See? And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned, or learned. Yeah, from Jesuit trained cemetery schools who've got the pieces of paper on their wall. You gotta be under the headship of a ordained pastor. Ordained by who? Oh, he's got the credentials, right? That's what they say. That's what even some of these kings and Bible even Christians say. Like people trying to defend that Breaker and Kim guy because they got pieces of paper on their wall. Look at them. They got the pieces of paper. They sure do. They're ordained of men. They sure are. They sure are. Hey, even Smiley Dave. Okay? 
He's got the piece of paper. Okay? Smiley Dave, it's not like not that big of a thing with him like that. You know, he's he's just so nice. He just he never loses his cool unless it is against uh, brethren of the Church of the Living God. Okay? Yeah, he never loses his cool. He never shows any temper. But never mind with that. Okay? So yeah. Yeah. A, a real pastor, right? Because they spent $100,000, some of them, for a piece of paper. Yeah. That isn't even fit to wipe betwixt your buttocks with. Yeah. So, these people who the words are sealed because they don't have the light in them, our Lord Jesus Christ, but they have that light, that false light, that angel of light, being led by his ministers of righteousness. So, they go to their ministers of righteousness, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Well, you, you need to go to the Hebrew or the Greek. Ooh, which one? Which one? Our brother uh, last night shared with me just a, just a beautiful thing that the Lord did uh, with him, through him, uh, on that lines, right? And see, the cemeterians... You go to them about which is the perfect word. Is there such a thing as a perfect word? They, they and on some of them, they, like these King James Bible believing Christians, you know, that go to the cemetery schools. It's like, well, this is the best. Yes, this is the best that we have. Is it perfect? Is it perfect? Come on. Is it perfect? Is it perfect? Well, the originals are perfect. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, well, I can find errors. You know, a lot of the times, all the times, that the errors that people think they find, it's usually that they're not rightly dividing the word of truth or comparing scripture with scripture. Yeah. 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 And verse 12, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, or learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Well, I don't have the piece of paper. I'm not ordained of man to do this. So I'm not qualified. <laughs> How many people are beaten into submission by that? Have you thought about that? Hmm? Because, because of Catholicism and this mentality that you need to be approved of man to do anything to even to flip a burger at mcdonald's you gotta be have a what is it a health certificate or a food handler's license to flip a burger at mcdonald's wow wow you need a piece of paper from a man to say that you're qualified to do that and see, that mentality comes from where? Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Think about that, okay? And then the lost convert being fed lies and being taught by these devils how to justify themselves through the scripture. Oh, wow. And that's the difference between us. That's the difference between us. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm going to hold that. Remember that. That's the difference between us. Okay? Remember that. But verse 13 here. Verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Baptists are pretty good at that. Not as good as the Catholics are. Oh, boy. Not as good as the Catholics are. Yeah. If you don't do this, you're in danger of uh, mortal sin, eternal damnation. Yeah. Coming from a system that can't even guarantee you that you're once saved, always saved. You're eternally secure. You're going to go to heaven when you die. Yeah. Therefore, verse 14, Behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among the, this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, 
For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. And all the while, they're saying, well, what hit us? What hit us? Right? What hit us? Wow, this is so unexpected. How? How? How is it unexpected? You know, sooner or later, the Lord, if you're truly saved, is going to lead you, guide you into all truth. Sooner or later, he's going to guide you to what he actually said. But see, when you fall for the lives of the lies of the educated, of the cemetery train, Jesuit train, cemeterians, well, you got to go to the Greek. Well, the King James is archaic and blah, 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 blah. And you fall for all those lies. You're at the foot of a priest. Think about it, Christian. Think about it. Think about that. You, you're taught, well, I, I don't know the Greek or the Hebrew. And my pastor says, well, here, read this Bible. That's based off of the Greek and the Hebrew. But I, I don't know as much as he does because he's got the piece of paper. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. Man. This is why I'm so adamant against what is called Christianity because it is Catholicism. Especially today. Christianity is Catholicism, and it's repugnant. But Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 29, one verse, one verse, verse 4, verse 4. Yet the Lord hath not given you an heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Mm. Mm. Why? Why? Now you got to remember a dispensational difference here in Deuteronomy chapter 29. you got to remember what we have looked at thus far is in a dispensation when it was faith and works and the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, was not a permanent resident. You have to remember that. See, you have, see, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. What we are looking at right now is called instruction and in righteousness, okay? You have to remember that, okay? You have to remember that. But see, if you're going to choose that other Jesus, if you're going to boot the door out of the way and go up some other way of your own choosing, choosing another Jesus, okay, the Lord is going to give you what you have requested. The Lord is going to allow you to go down that path and find that Jesus, which is not the true Jesus, who which is not the true Father. You will find your father, the devil, who is not the true father. Okay? Who is not the true father. Okay? That's who you will find. Not Jesus Christ, who is the father. Because why? You hated instruction. You hated the fear of the Lord. But yet you wanted to gain, you wanted to cling to what? Some religiosity. You wanted to keep up the Joneses, as it were. And you read the authorized version of the scriptures. But yet the Lord isn't, I mean, is the Lord talking to you and you're just ignoring him? See, now that, that's called quenching the spirit. And if someone who is truly, genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you can't quench the spirit for that long without dire consequences to you. You can't. You can't. Any one of you of the church of the living God, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. Because what will happen? The chastisement will be there. And if you can persist in it and he lets you go, you're heading for destruction. You may be heading to the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Ah. 
How much is it worth to you? Hmm? How much is your entertainment worth to you? Psalm 69, verses 22 on to verse 25. And those who are ensnared in this religiosity, let their table become a snare before them. And that which should be, which had have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. I have seen, especially on YouTube, on some of the videos, or some of the links I've been sent by some of these um, Christians, you know, on the videos, how they can do incredible acrobatics and gymnastics to justify sin while using the actual scriptures. It's like, wow. 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 Easy believism devils are really good at that. Really good at that. With the old, you know, well, hey, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. But don't worry because you're eternally secure. So see what that means is go ahead and keep what I'm doing. You shouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But see, like it in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? It's exactly that. Well, we're not going to judge you. We wouldn't do that. But you shouldn't do that. But see, we love you anyway. Come in. Come on. Be with us. Yes, be with us, okay? That's, who, that's when you need us the most, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're once saved, always saved. You just believe. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. But don't worry, it's not going to affect your salvation. And if you are truly saved, yes, you are. Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. Yes, you can't lose what isn't yours to lose. That's true. But what's more important to you? That's the question. And with the lost convert... Why can't they realize? Why can't they realize if they're reading the same scriptures you and I are? Let their eyes be darkened that they see not. And make their loins continually to shake. Verse 24. Pour out thine indignation upon them. And let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. Hmm. Could it be that the Lord isn't in you at all? Hmm. Just you think about it. I mean, you look at that, that disgusting website, ChristianBook.com. The, the multitude of books out there that have to do with the spiritual life. You know, someone can get a hold of that kind of stuff uh, or any kind of book. Anyway, and there's nothing wrong with reading books. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? You, you ought to be careful which ones you read, okay? But there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But see, when you take the writings of men and try to replace that with the knowledge that the Lord will give you out of the fear of the Lord... There's something missing. And it's probably the Lord himself. You see? And of course, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Verses 14 and 15. Matthew chapter 13, verses 14 and 15. Just reiterating what we already read in Isaiah chapter 6. Therefore speak I on... Oh, what are we reading? Verses 14 and 15. Uh, yeah, let's read verses 13 on to verse 15. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Or could you say dark sayings? Because they, they see not... Because they see... See not. And hearing, hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. 
For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. They have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. See, the lost convert, dear brother, sister, at root, hasn't given up the love of that. See, when the Lord saves you, you are a new creature. Okay? People like to argue, well, okay, you're saved, but okay, the thing of being a new creature, it's debatable. No, no. See, because why? Why? For the Lord saves you what? You're dead in trespasses and sins. Your father is the devil. And when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, manning up, taking accountability and responsibility because it's your fault that he died and you put him on the cross because of what you did. And you have fear of him and call upon his name and he save you. Today, in this dispensation, he seals you with himself. Hence, you are a new creature because you are the Lord's workmanship, which Ephesians chapter 2, 800 verse 10 talks about. Okay? So when you are saved, that is when you are a new creature. Okay? The process of sanctification is another thing, okay? But you are a new creature. Why? Because the Lord is now in you, and the Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, will guide you into all truth. And before, you didn't have that. You had the Spirit of this world, which is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. The spirit of man is the spirit of the world, dear friend. Okay? You have to recognize that. You have to realize that. And with the Lord in you, okay, we, we, we sin. We mess up every day. We do. We sin every day. I do. So do you. You say you don't. You're a liar. Get out of here. We fall. We fall. I know brethren, saved brethren, to this day, for example, I'm just going to bring up an example, who fallen, who fall, but see, the falling is a choice. It's not like a whoops-a-daisy. No. But see, when you make the choice to go contrary to what the Lord has said, that is you falling. Not that you're like, doop de doop de doop whoopsie, I fell without any choice in the matter. No. 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 It's a choice. You choose to sin. You choose to sin. Sin is a choice. And then it's like, well, I just won't choose to sin. Good luck on trying to do that for 24 hours. Good luck. Because remember, what does the scripture tell you? Thoughts. Thoughts are sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. What, what's going on up there in your brain, Casboy? Hmm? Even thoughts are, th are sins. Or could be sins, excuse me. So, you just go, well, well I'm not, I choose not to sin anymore. Good luck. If the greatest of us, who was Paul, the apostle, couldn't do it. I guess you must, well, shoot, with that, you might as well uh, take up a pen and write your own little kind of testimony, huh? Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 is very important because it describes the spiritual climate right before the time of Jacob's trouble. And what a beautiful description it is. <laughs> what a dis beautiful description it is. Because what? What is religiosity? They love the praises of men. And they do all their things to be seen of men. But when the curtains are drawn and it's just the four sides of the wall and the ceiling and the floor, the real you comes out. The real you comes out. It's a shame to even speak of, of what they do in secret. Mm. But see, religiosity, religiosity, one of the, one of, one of the weapons of Satan. The greatest weapon that Satan has is ignorance. And we already addressed that because you convince people that they have to listen to a priest, um, excuse me, a cemetery trained Jesuitarian, okay, a cemetery trained Jesuitarian, Okay, that has a thousand dollar piece of a thousand dollar wish. Yeah, right. A hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall. Okay, you train these people that, okay, only the Jesuit trained cemeterian or Jesuitarian, okay, he is the only one who can rightly tell you what to believe. Okay, because remember, you're not learned. But then you go to him and he's like, well, nobody really has the perfect word of God. We can't really know for sure. That kind of. You, 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 ever, you ever talk with some of these people? Okay? It's irritating. Believe me. Believe me. Mm -hmm. But see, what Satan has done through religiosity, through Christianity, verses 13 on to verse 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. A Pharisee takes... Deck the halls with balls of holly, ra la 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 la. Okay? The Pharisee takes tradition here, scriptures here. That's what a Pharisee does. That's what the Pharisee is. Okay? People who want to adhere to the scriptures and have their life fashioned according to the scriptures. The lost converts call us the Pharisee. When in reality, they are the Pharisees because they have set their own traditions above what the scripture saith. Okay? I said to the one email, the guy called me a Pharisee. Because, uh, oh, what, what, was it, uh, what was it about? Um, uh, it was something about worldliness, I don't remember. And he called me a Pharisee. And I asked him, I was like, okay, well, what do I got to do to be saved? It was a tongue-in-cheek question. And he's like, just believe. It's like, well, well, guess what, pal? I do believe. It's like, well, then you got to stop doing this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And you're calling me the Pharisee? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think so, pal. But that's what a Pharisee is. Sets up their tradition above what the scripture actually says. Okay. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven, showing you for who he's addressing. Kingdom of heaven is the actual physical little, literal kingdom, okay? This is not talking about the kingdom of God, spiritual, okay? But, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And Paul gives something similar about that in Romans chapter 1 that they have pleasure in those who do them. They're not going, they're not saved, and they take pleasure in these false lost converts that they're not saved. Misery loves company. Paul addresses that in Romans chapter 1, okay? That they have pleasure in them that do those things, okay? Hold your place, and let's look at that. Let's look at that. Romans chapter 1, okay? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God, who knowing, see, that's the, that's, that's the danger of this religiosity, especially this Christian religiosity, 
the King James Bible and Christians. Okay? Not, not all of them, no, of course not. Not all of them. But a majority. Who knowing the judgment of God. Because they have the scriptures, right? These easy believism devils who preach that easy believism knowingly who tell you that it's faith alone from Genesis to Revelation calling themselves dispensational and yet preaching just believe preaching against repentance scriptural repentance which is brokenness of self-righteousness and saying prayer is a work those people, I believe, are a passive point of no return. See, that takes a knowledge in order to preach against it. It's not an ignorance. Someone who is ignorant, yes, can do, that can happen. But a brother or a sister even, you know, like with Apollos, who was it? Priscilla and Aquila went to him and uh, spake to, uh, taught him or spake to him about the word of God. Uh, the, the thing of salvation more perfectly. I just butchered that. Someone could <laughs> correct me on that in, in, the, in the description box. Okay. Oh, here, let me write that down myself so I can remember, okay? <laughs> but um, yes, yes, one of us will go to a babe or someone who's ignorant or messed up. Okay, yes. All right. But when you actively, knowingly preach against what is written of truth that's a right there brethren right there I personally believe and am persuaded that a lot of these easy believism devils who tell you prayer is a work repentance is a work okay it's faith alone from the, the people who promote that and teach that they're gone there's no way there's no way there's no way. You're actively preaching against the salvation of God. There's no way. There's no way that... I, I believe there's no way that someone can come back from that. The impossible is possible with God. Yes. Yes. Probable, no. Uh, probable, no. Possible, uh -huh. maybe. But... Verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Shut up the kingdom of heaven. Have pleasure in them that do them. You see? And see what Paul wrote was talking about for us today in this dispensation. This way here our Lord is talking about the kingdom of heaven. But let's continue. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, just like the Jesuits do, and for pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and they do that through the internet. And when he is made, Ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Oh boy. Some of the, you know, like some of the guys of these easy believism, the guys who are their teachers, they're bad. But some of the ones that have, they have instructed and taught in this easy believism, it's like, you know, it's like, wow, I, I can't even civilly speak with you. Never mind. Go away. Go away. These are the, uh, and it seems too that a lot of this happens with the younger crowd, unfortunately, because the Jesuit order wants their coadjutors to go after the youth. But they make them more, uh, twofold more the child of hell than themselves through religiosity. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter, what are you doing in James? Galatians chapter 4. Just one verse. Verse 17. Galatians chapter 4, verse 17. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. 
and Galatians chapter 6, 11, and 12. Hmm. Uh, and 13, 11 on to verse 13. Ye see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, a performance, an actor, a thespian, They constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Now this is talking about those circumcised, be circumcised, go under the law. Okay? But the same principle of what we're addressing applies, obviously. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Echoing what our Lord said in Matthew 23. Okay, echoing, this is for us today, about the false brethren brought in, unawares. Okay? All right? Now go to John chapter 5. Go to John chapter 5. Here, here's, a, here's a symptom of it. Here's something that, um, here's something that could baffle many. <laughs> it's, it used to baffle me. But we get it. I get it. You get it as a church of the living God. But you need to be reminded. So many of you are going to be, are going to be devastated. The more this falling away happens, the more it happens, the more prolonged it is. And it's going to be prolonged until we get taken up, obviously. You need to be prepared. You're seeing it happen, aren't you? John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Now, what do you say? What, what do you say immediately? Well, they, you, well, Brad, Brad, what do you tell us? What do you tell us? You tell us Acts chapter 17, 11, right? Right? Acts chapter 17, 11. These were more noble in, than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. We got a clue there, Watson. Received the word with all readiness of mind. And, and they received not the love of the truth, like it says in 2 Thessalonians. We are purposely not turning there. Okay, we are purposely not going to those uh, things for uh, in uh, second, uh, second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy. We are purposely not going there. I want you to see it elsewhere. Okay, but they receive the word with all readiness of mind. Where in second Thessalonians it said that they receive not the love of the truth. They right here, what? Receive the word with all readiness of mind. They received the love of the truth. And they did what? And searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So you see here in Acts chapter 17, 11, they did what first? Received the word with all readiness of mind. They wanted to hear the truth. And it's like, okay, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to search the scriptures to verify. And it's like, oh, you see? Okay. But there again, okay, all right. So have you received the love of the truth? And the, the false convert, lost convert says, well, yeah, I just believe. What about repentance? It's going from unbelief to belief. Here we go again. No, you've, you've missed it. You've missed it. You've met every single solitary easy believism devil that I have ever encountered and pressed this issue with them. It always comes back to, I'm better than so-and-so. It always comes to that. Every single time. Without exception. Without exception. I'm better than so-and-so. I'm not as bad as that. <laughs> every single time. Every single time. But see, what about those who, okay, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You got these King James Bible Christians. 
Uh, a lot of them who are who have infiltrated, you know, that fish lady woman uh, and others, uh, you, you know, who who purport to read the scriptures and believe the scriptures. OK, they have the same scriptures we do. But yet they're easy believism, not rightly dividing the word of truth while saying they rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah. Hmm. What's going on? What's going on? Isaiah chapter 28. These are familiar verses, but brethren, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. Okay? It's happening in abundance, but there is going to come a significant bomb dropping, if you will, in your personal life sometime, somewhere, where the rug is going to be taken out from under you. And someone who you loved and thought was a brother, thought was a sister, who you looked to, who you had sweet fellowship. And then it's going to come out, wait a minute. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. There's a difference between someone who is in error. Okay? I've been in error. But I hear rebuke. Rebuke me through the scriptures. Okay? Rebuke me in love. Okay? Go ahead. You give me the scriptures, and when you give me the scriptures, it's like, okay, you know if you give me the scriptures, I'm going to look at them. And you also know I'm going to, uh, number one, look at it in a way of rightly dividing, and number two, compare scripture with scripture. Okay? All right? But that's how we are supposed to be. Why? Because we have received a love of the truth. Isaiah chapter 20, what is it? 28? Verses 9 on verse 13. You know this. We're hitting it again. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And Peter talks about desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Okay? The sincere milk of what? The word. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Hold your place there. Good thing you got fingers, huh? Hold your place there. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 1. <laughs> Verses 26 on to verse 29, very quickly. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh... Not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the wise things of the world. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And in the eyes of the world, we of the church of the living God are that big. In reality, we are that big. And Christianity, Christianity is ginormous. And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. So, we receive the word with all readiness of mind. We receive a love of the truth, and we search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Why? Because the spirit of truth, he will lead you, guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit, and the Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. And sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Do you get it? Okay, that's what the first part there in Isaiah chapter 28 uh, is addressing. But look at the other one. And stammering tongue. Not well educated, not with the words of man's wisdom. Okay, have you listened to a couple of the videos the Lord has given me? <laughs> I rest my case. Okay. Rather than these soft, eloquent orators who are perfect in their speech and know how to give a good homily, like any good Catholic, <coughs> excuse me, but like any good Christian. Yeah. Verse 12. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Come unto me, all ye who are labor and, uh, labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And I will give you rest. Okay. And this is the refreshing. Yet they 
would not hear. Because they have not left their first love. You heard me right. Their first love. The love of the world. Where the Lord talks about in Revelation about how you have left your first love, which ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ, but unto the false lost convert, what is their first love? The world, the flesh, and the devil. But the word of the Lord was unto them. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward, backward, and be broken and snared and taken. What does that mean? Well, let's go back to John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Hmm. The dark sayings. People who will read the scriptures void of the Lord. Or in place of that, they have a man-made, devilish, sensual religiosity. And they will search the scriptures not to find correction, reproof, rebuke, or instruction in righteousness. No. But they'll search the scriptures on, uh, for a loophole on how they can justify themselves and justify what they're doing. So, just reading the scriptures, just reading them, apart from the Lord guiding you. Because you might say, well, what about a lost person, Brad? Hey, I was lost and reading the scriptures, but the Lord was guiding me onto himself breaking me to a billion little pieces, to a sniveling little piece of snot, crying in a bathroom before I opened the door at the pizza place I used to work at. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. See, the Lord had his, he's like, come here, Brad. Come here, Brad. Come here, Brad. And I was reading the scriptures. Yes. But he was like, come on, come here. Showing me. Okay? I wanted to hear the truth. Okay, and I searched the scriptures daily. Why? Because I received the word with a readiness of mind. I received the love of the truth. Okay? All right? And I didn't balk. And I don't balk when the Lord says, don't do that. But what happens? The false convert and their religiosity, they don't care. And they will search the script. They can read the scriptures, but they will find little things that to, to try to justify themselves. See, because without the Lord, this could be just an average book, can it? Think about it. Why are there so many commentaries? Why are there so many books on the spiritual life to replace what isn't there? To replace it with a spirit. A spirit that is what? Against and replaces. You get the point. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. The scriptures are about our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the scriptures will bring you to him. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. God knows everybody. But he doesn't know everybody as having a personal relationship. Okay? There is a knowing of knowing who you are and where you are. I know the address of so-and-so. I know what he looks like. I know what he sounds like. I know his address. I know where he lives. But I do not know him in a relation. See? You understand? But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. And that's capital G. False converts, lost converts, do have a love of the little G God in them. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him 
ye will receive. And right here. How can ye believe? Which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. And of course, what do you do with that? Luke chapter 16. One verse, one Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. How can ye believe? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? The little pats on the head. Oh, it's okay if you watch a little television. That's okay. What about you, Brad? You said you watch uh, uh, documentaries. Yeah, and we turn it off. Turn it off. Get away from it. Okay? Yeah, moderation. Yes. But see, what the false convert does is take that to justify them watching worldly entertainment. Doing worldly things and justifying it. And what says the scriptures? What did we just look at? Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. All your little justifications in your Christian religiosity to justify your worldliness and carnality are going to fall short on deaf ears of our Lord Jesus Christ. All your justification. You can justify all you want to a man who's just like you will die. But when it comes to the Lord, how are you going to justify it? There's no, there's no justification. No justification for doing contrary to what he says. There isn't any justification for it. There isn't. Hmm. One might, well, what about lying, Brad? What about lying? What do you mean? Oh, about you're talking about the uh, the Holocaust, about the guys who who said to the Gestapo, they asked them if there are Jews in your basement, and they say no. Hmm? What about that? Hmm? All sin, all lies are sin. Hmm? What about that? Hmm? Not turning over someone onto murderers. Hmm? And see, that is the thought process. See, right there alone, right there alone, okay? Right there alone. Remember Rahab who hid the spies on her roof, okay? She's like, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where they were, right? See, but see, that's the beginning of the loophole that someone will try to jump through in order to justify their sinful behavior. Okay? Think about that. Think about that, okay? Think about that. Mm. Think about that. People will say, well, that's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. No, no, it isn't. The Jew is the apple of God's eye, okay? The Jew is the apple of God's eye. And those spies and Rahab, by the way, had a place in what God was doing. And the descendants of Rahab are blessed and protected of the children of Israel, even unto this very day. So, you put that in your pipe and smoke it. Let's continue. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom ye trust. So see, these people who read the scriptures, but yet have not received the love of the truth, but read it just for the sake of reading it thereof and thinking that in just the reading of it, of the scriptures therein, of, without the Lord, means what? Salvation? No. No. If you are one, one of these false converts, reading the scriptures to justify your sin and yet are still as... 
worldly as a devil? Something is missing there. Why aren't why is your library littered with commentaries and all these spiritual books? Hmm? Because it's trying to replace something that isn't there in the first place. And our Lord says right here, there is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom you trust. So the very scriptures that these lost converts are rejecting and rather are searching to justify themselves, the very scriptures that they have not received the love of the truth thereof, the very scriptures are the ones that are going to condemn them. Never when someone comes to this and says, well, this shows that you don't need to read the scriptures or anything. Tell them to blow it out their rear end. He's uplifting the scriptures. Verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Because why? What is missing? The love of the truth. And see, in Matthew chapter 27, now see, also too, you got to remember, in Matthew chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, Matthew chapter, where are you going? Matthew chapter 27, these religious people, okay? Matthew chapter 27, verses 39 on to verse 43. And they, went, this is about Christ on the cross. And they, and they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come now, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Verse 43. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. <laughs> Coming from the people that knew that Christ was to be born in Bethlehem, that out of Galilee cometh no prophet. Okay? These fastidious, studious keepers of the scriptures, the scribes and Pharisees, but see, they knew the word, but they didn't know the author of the word. They didn't have a love of the truth. It was on to them, line upon line, precept upon precept, that they might be taken and fall backward. See, whereas the other, it is life-giving. See, see how that works? These were the same people. Same people who knew the scriptures so very well. But look at verse 42. <laughs> look at that verse. If he be the king of Israel, let him come now. Let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. The Jews require a sign. Okay. What would have happened if he did? I'll tell you what would have happened. Those same ones who said... Come down from the cross and we'll believe you. It's like, okay, comes down from the cross. Here I am. You believe me now? Devil! That's a devil! And they would have stoned him. That's exactly what would have happened. Why? Because uh, this, especially this generation of the Pharisees, not all of them, because there were Pharisees that believed. You read about that in the book of Acts. Absolutely, yes. But, these people who knew the scriptures but yet didn't have a love of the truth. And if he would have come down off that cross, they would have killed him themselves because they said, would have said he had a devil. They already said that he had a devil. They actually blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And remember, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost can only happen when Christ himself is physically on the earth. You and I today cannot blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Okay? Why? Because Christ himself is not on the earth. Okay? Christ himself on the earth, then you got to worry about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Okay? Because our Lord is the only one who mentioned it. Paul never mentioned it. Peter never mentioned it. Okay? 
For us today, we have nothing to worry about blaspheming the Holy Ghost, okay? Because the Lord is not physically pro uh, present on the earth, okay? But these guys had already blasphemed the Holy Ghost and said that he had a devil, okay? They already said that of him. And yet they're saying, come down and we'll believe you. He's like, okay, come down. Here I am. Devil, devil. And they would have killed him them, uh, killed them themselves. Religious. Very religious. Studious. New scriptures. Uh, I bet you one of these Pharisees of old could outquote even, even the best who know the Old Testament like the back of their hand. Could probably outquote them and probably muse with them about some of the doctrines of the Old Testament. Yes. Yes. But what happened? What happened? What happened? Luke 15. Uh, Luke, 15. Luke uh, excuse me, Luke 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. They never left their first love. The love of the world. The love of the flesh. They never left it. They never left it. And see, well, it's like, well, okay, Brad, how do you know you're saved? How do you know? You're questioning me. How do you know you're saved? Well, the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay, <laughs> this is the equivalent of being born again, which also um, easy believism devils and other the like saying, well, he, uh, being born again is just for the Jews. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 on verse 21. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That old man, okay? We still struggle because our spirit and soul are in what? This sinful flesh. You read about that in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? Right here. This is where sin has been relegated to. This flesh is from the earth, buddy boy. Flesh is from the earth, Okay? We came from the earth. This came from the earth. All flesh is sinful. Okay, you got to remember that. Got to remember that. All right. <clears throat> but so again, like we had said earlier, that when the Lord seals you, you are a new creature. Okay. The process of sanctification, that takes a long time. Okay. Some things get cleared up right away. Some, uh, some things we struggle with until we die or get caught up, don't we? Don't we? Yeah. Yeah. But the minute you are saved, you are a new creature. New because you're not of that anymore. So you're born again. Something new from the old. It's born again. See, Paul doesn't use the words born again. And this is where the devil comes in with these idiots who say, well, being born again is only for the Jews. It's, oh, shut up. Okay, Paul never uses the phrase born again, but he's describing the event of being born again. The, of being born again, that seal until the day of redemption. Okay? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, God, that, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Then you go to Galatians chapter 2. Then you go to Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, 
but Christ liveth within me, the Holy Ghost, that seal until the day of redemption. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Watch out for people who say, you've got to keep the Ten Commandments today. Watch out for that, okay? And now you go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 out of verse 11. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And now Paul, in context, is talking about how he was as a Pharisee. Okay? Yes, he is. All right? And Paul had quite a dose of religiosity going on, didn't he? He justified killing of the church of the living God. Until the Lord finally is like, Hey, Paul, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. I.e., you're fighting against me. You're not going to win. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things, not just the religiosity, but that life that you are supposed to leave behind, that unfortunately does come up periodically in our daily lives, doesn't it? Okay? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And being found in and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Remember this verse. Verse 10, that I may know him. It's going to come up to play here in a little bit, actually. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. To know him. Relational. See, the false lost converts know him. But know him as through a living relationship. A relationship of prayer. Being in fellowship with him in the word. Letting him speak. You want to hear God speaking to you? Read the scriptures. If you want to hear him audibly, read out loud. Okay? All right? But see, not having mine own righteousness, verse 9, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. But what happens? Romans chapter 10, just one verse. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, Ignorant and also willfully ignorant, which is stupidity. Being ignorant, not knowing better is one thing. But when it comes to willful ignorance, not wanting to know, that's stupidity. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And there it is. There's a difference if you don't actually truly know. The Lord will send of the church of the living God unto you. Because we are ambassadors for Christ. Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? If you truly are ignorant of this, God will take care of that. He will send unto you one of his ambassadors. Okay? All right? But see, if you are willfully ignorant, I want to establish your own righteousness. You know, booting the door out of the way, okay? And going up some other way. That's stupidity. And what has happened? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Wait, we were just in. <laughs> we were just in 2 Corinthians, weren't we? Yes, we were. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is 1 under verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, twisting the scriptures to lie unto people, and also handling the word of God deceitfully, 
looking into the scripture to try to find a loophole to justify yourself. And if you don't rightly divide and don't take in context certain things, even with the scriptures, a false, lost convert, even in the scriptures can find a justification for virtually anything. They really can. They have to do some acrobatics. But ultimately, and see, that's the thing. They can find a justification anywhere for their sin. Those of us who are truly saved and have the Lord within us, when we read the scripture, there's no justification. We're going to touch on that here very quickly. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, excuse me, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, walking the talk, actually believing what he says, loving what he says, doing what he says, okay? That's the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Now hold on. In the Garden of Eden, he says to what to Eve? Your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Having eyes and see not. Having eyes and they perceive not. Seeing and, excuse me, seeing and perceive not. See. The lost false convert can see. Yes, they can. But it's their minds that are blinded to actually prevent them from seeing rightly as they ought to see. Does that make sense? Why? Because through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, a little won't hurt. We all got to do it. I know when to quit. That's something that came from Ruckman that was actually very good. Okay? We've always done it this way. Got to make a living, right? Yeah. Those are, your, those are the justifications. That's a blindness of the mind. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. And that light that blinds their eyes, that angel of light, and whose ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. That's why it's so hard to reach these people, brethren. Because they're deceived and being deceived. And they're justifying themselves all the way they go. Go to 1 John chapter 3. Go to 1 John chapter 3. Now here's where we're going to get a pretty deep into this kind of. First John chapter three. We're going to be reading um, verses two on to verse nine. Uh, we are not going to look at First John chapter three twenty nine. <laughs> Obviously, I wrote it down wrong. But First John chapter three verses two on to verse nine. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is in his glorified body. And when we get redeemed, caught up, we're going to get our glorified body, not this body of earth, okay? Not this body of earth. We're going to get a new body. You're not going to have any more pains, brother. Your arm, never mind that arm. That arm, you're going to be able to do jumping jacks. Hey, you'll probably, with your new body, brother, I'm uh, addressing a specific brother, you'll be able to take with your bad arm probably 200 pounds, and the new body's like, ha, 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 thank you, Lord. Okay, uh, my, my, my one brother with the back and the shoulder, it's like, carry a house on your shoulder. Okay, <laughs> my wife, she'll be able to do, you know, <laughs> run and do things with that she can't with her hips and stuff like that. Okay, new body. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Verse three, 
And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. This hope in him. Hold your place here. Just, just one reference. That's all we need. Okay? What hope is in you? What hope is in you? See, the easy believism devil, lost false convert, is a self-hope. I'm saved because I just believe. Okay? Or you justify yourself. But, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Ooh. Ooh. And every man that hath this hope in him, and Jesus Christ is our hope, that hope in you, that hope in you is Jesus Christ. Purifieth himself even as he is pure. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? All right? For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Abstain from all appearance of evil. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It will not cleave to me. But see, the lost convert who even reads the scriptures will justify themselves. Why? Because, okay, they're reading the scriptures, but yet they're justifying what they're doing and not some even caring. There's something missing. What is that? And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. We all sin. We all mess up. Yes, we do. Every day. Every single day. Yes, we do. But see, that's the difference. We as the church of the living God, we receive chastisement from the Lord. And if we play around on him in that chastisement, he lets his hand off of us for us to be destroyed. Okay, that's the difference. Someone who is a false convert, that isn't there. Okay, so, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. What hope is in you? The hope in me is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our hope. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. He is the blessed hope. The hope that is in you, brother, sister, is Jesus Christ. Okay? How do you know you're saved? Because of the hope that's in me. That hope is Jesus Christ. I can't see him. Okay? Like it says, hold your place here. And, and, and Hebrews 11. Okay? Uh, okay? Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I can't see the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to touch on that here in a second. Very beautiful on that. But that hope that is in you is Jesus Christ. Okay? Well, you know you're saved, Brad. Because of the hope that is in me. And my hope is Jesus Christ. He lives within me. I'm sealed until the day of rede uh, redemption. Okay? Well, I have it too. Well, really? You have it too? Really? Really? Then why are you standing there trying to justify, even through the scriptures, your sin? That... In the scriptures, God condemns. Explain that to me. Verse 4. Whoso committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's, anyone asks you what a sin is, there you go. Okay? There you go. All right? But you would not have known sin unless the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay? The law was there to show you that you can't do it, to show you your sinfulness, okay? All right? The law was our, our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, okay? That's what that's not. We've talked about that lots of times before, okay? And ye know 
that he was manifested. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yeah. God was manifest in the flesh. Yeah. Okay. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. There's no sin in Jesus Christ. He didn't have a sinful thought. Okay. And you got to remember, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay. The word, uncorruptible word, was made flesh. Okay. The word, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, cannot sin, never did sin, was not tempted by sin. But see, the word that was made flesh, that flesh is what Satan tempted. Okay. You see how that works? There are a lot of people who are too, and I'm using this politely, too stupid, willfully ignorant to figure that out. It's very simple, actually. Okay. Verse 6. And here, here we go. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Oh. Oh. Seen him. You and I haven't seen the Lord today. Oh, look, you crazy psychopath. You, you don't watch what I do anyway, so never mind. But look, you crazy psychopaths who say that you've seen the Lord. You have not seen the Lord. You have seen a devil. Okay? You have seen a devil. We walk by faith, not by sight. You're claiming that you've been to hell, been to heaven, seen the Lord. You, you haven't. Okay? You haven't. You've seen a devil. Okay? You've seen a fantasy portrayed to you by the devil. Okay? You have not seen these things. You're lying. You're deceived. Or you're outright lying. Or both. Okay? We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? I have never seen the Lord. You're truly saved. You have never seen the Lord. You wicked, idiot, charismatic, you have not seen the Lord. You have seen the devil. Okay? Well, it says right there, it says right there, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Known him. See, there's a comma right there after hath not seen him, neither known him. Uh, about that, go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 3. Who saw the Lord? The people uh, before the crucifixion, the disciples and the apostles. Yes. And after the death, burial, and resurrection, he appeared. And, you know, in Acts chapter 1 and 2, unto them he appeared personally unto Paul. He appeared unto John in Patmos, right? Yeah. Who was an apostle? Okay. Okay. John, who wrote the... Uh, the uh, uh, the epistles, uh, the uh, Gospel of John and First and Second John and the Book of Revelation. Okay. All right. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the capital W word of life. And yes, brother, all the appearances of capital W. Word all appear in what John wrote at the behest of the Holy Ghost. A picture of the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. Amen. Amen. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and have declared, we, uh, we uh, excuse me, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So, and also to remember the Jews require a sign, okay? But who actually saw the Lord? Apostles, disciples, and those who were alive around during the time when Christ walked the earth at the first. Okay? All right? And you can say about Cornelius and whatnot. Okay, yes, yes. In that transitional period during the time of the writing of the book of Acts. Yes. Okay? 
But, you know, brethren, people, we have not seen the Lord. And, uh, beg your pardon. And if you're out there, one of you crazy charismatic twits, saying, well, I've seen it. You haven't seen the Lord. You've seen the devil. Okay? So, whoso abideth in him sinneth not. Abide in him. Abide in Christ who lives within you. If you do what the Lord says, if you do what the Lord says, the Lord in you is not going to guide you into sin. But no one can do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, perfectly. Not even Paul. Especially not Peter. Okay? Catholic. All right? But whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him. Okay? And who are the ones who saw him? Just talked about neither known him. Known him. And what does Jesus say to Thomas? Like Thomas, because you have seen, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. And also, remember I told you about Philippians chapter 3? To hinge that, I didn't say hinge that, excuse me. But to remember Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, what Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So the seen him, who saw him? Those when he was on the earth and the disciples and the apostles and stuff like that. Okay? Neither known him. Know him in a relationship, not just knowing the head knowledge, knowing in a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with the living Savior, our Father. Okay? Okay? And, yes, if you abide in him, if you abide in him, what does that say? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. You do what the Lord says, the way he says to do it, he's not going to guide you into sin. But see, not even Paul, who is the greatest of all the church of the living God. Not even Paul could do that. Romans chapter 7. That which I do I allow not, but what I hate that do I. Okay. Paul, oh wretched man that I am. Not even Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God. Not even he could abide 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every millisecond. Because remember, thoughts are sin sometimes. Okay? Not even Paul could do that. But see, when we are doing as the Lord would have us to do according to the scripture, rightly divided for us. Okay? Are you getting me? But see, and also the Trinitarian comes to this, you know, this is a part with the Trinitarian. Go, to, go back to John chapter 5 about the seen him thing, okay? Here's a, here's a little trick of the uh, wicked Catholic Trinitarian, okay? I don't blame most Trinitarians because Christians are Trinitarians. Those of the Church of the Living God believe in the Godhead, okay? Hey! You guy, uh, Mr. Servant of Christ, and I'm not talking from the little boy from Canada. You, okay? You're, you're with your little Catholic symbol on your channel there. Yeah, having f a great fellowship with your fellow, fellow brethren, the easy believism crowd. Yeah. You know, hey, uh, you guys, you easy believism guys, um, you ought to be aware of that, that that guy's a Catholic. Okay, yeah, you believe in it in the Trinity, you're Catholic coadjutors yourself, but, you know, to put on the, the, you know, the suspension of disbelief, you should really separate yourselves from that Catholic, okay? Uh, like that one um, Kennis guy, the Knight of Columbus guy who was going around uh, commenting on these guys' channels, you know, just Catholics talking with Catholics. Uh, some of them were like, oh, yeah, right, we should probably separate ourselves from him. You should separate yourselves from that guy, too. He's a Catholic. Okay? He's a Catholic. I'm just saying. Okay? I'm just saying. But what, what is the Trinitarian like? To, and they use this. Go to John chapter 5, verses 36 on to verse 38. But I have greater witness than that of John. 
For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. Catholic. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. And they go, seen him. Verse 37. The Lord said, you've never what? Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Okay, and right here. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Neither whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. But people have seen the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Hmm. Hmm. And has seen him. And our Lord says that no one has ever seen. You have, ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Or seen his shape. But yet people saw the Lord. And about that, of course, John chapter 14, verses 9 on to verse 11. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, shew us the Father? Oh boy, you got a conundrum there, don't you? What is, what's being talked about? Okay. People saw Jesus Christ. Okay. The apostles, the disciples, those when he was on the earth at the first, these charismatics today, they have seen a devil. Okay. But people have seen the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus just said, you've neither heard his voice or seen his shape. But yet he says right there, he's the father. How's that work? He's talking about the soul. Okay. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. Okay. The word that was made flesh. Okay. The word that was made flesh. Okay. The body. God the father. The soul. Okay. Okay. And the Holy Ghost. The spirit. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, meaning the soul? Okay? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay? All right. <laughs> uh, yes, and you and I, as the church of the living God, we have the Father within us. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? And the Lord is that Spirit. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? All right? This is another thing that the... Uh, Trinitarians will come to and can use it to try to twist their Babylonian because it, it's got its uh, the Trinity doctrine got its um, creation in Babylon because of what Nimrod, Semiramis, and Ninus. There's your Trinity. Went on to Egypt, perfected in Catholicism. Okay, the Trinity is of the devil. Okay, okay, Trinity is of the devil. People, watch out for that. All right. And yet, you you read the authorized version of the scriptures, and you still think that God is three persons. But see, I understand that because one of the the what Catholicism did straight out the gate was preach what one God of three persons. So so people have been brought up in that. So to them. To get out from that heresy, only the Lord can do it. Okay? Alright? Verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Yea, hath God said, thou shalt not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, and his seed remaineth in him, 
And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Yeah. John 3. John 3. The born again, okay? Which we've already addressed. And you got and in the description box we'll go through this. Uh we go through this chapter again, but uh about the born again thing that these people like, well, born again is just for the Jews. Oh, shut up. Shut up. John chapter 3. Verses 5 on to verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born of water, natural birth, you know, her water breaks, okay? And of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom, okay? Not the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about that. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, which is this wicked Christian religiosity, this repugnant Christian religiosity. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the capital S spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And right away, people are, well, see, it's for the children. No, Paul describes what being born again is. He just doesn't use the words born again. Okay? He doesn't. He doesn't. He's describing the new birth and putting on the new man. Okay? Once, once, the Lord seals you, saves you. You are sealed. You are born again. You are a new creature. The old Adamic is passed away, even though we still with it daily, right? But you are a new creature. You are born again, okay? And of course, the one that everyone points to who wants to try to refute this truth of Scripture is uh, 1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word, lowercase w, word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Okay? By the word of God, that liveth and abideth forever. Okay? And see, when you are saved, you're a new creature. And this is Ephesians chapter 1. We have to go there. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the, that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Sealed. Once saved, always saved. You're a new creature. You're born again. And then in for, uh, Ephesians 4, 22 and verse 30. Uh, actually, hmm, let's read. Oh, let me see. Let's read 17 on to verse 30. Okay. This I say, therefore. And testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, deceiving themselves and being deceived, that because they believe that they're saved without any repentance, or that they can say words and that proves they're saved. Yeah. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, being past feeling, meaning that any rebuke or chastisement that may come to them or someone saying, hey, you're doing it, you know, hey, you, you're in error, but it's like, no, nope, I'm saved because I believe or nope, uh, I can do this, all things are lawful for me. Past feeling. You know, if you prick them, they, they don't feel it. He who hardeneth his nef, neck, uh, he who often hard, hardeneth his neck um, will be suddenly broken or something like that. You know, you keep hardening your neck when you're rebuked or uh, reproved or something. 
Okay? But ye have not so learned Christ. Learn of me. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by him, but by him. Okay? And he said to learn of me. And you learn of him by the spirit of truth, which is the Lord himself, guiding you into all truth. So you learn of the Lord from the Lord. Isn't that something? Hmm. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man being born again, which is corrupted which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't go to bed angry because it just... It doesn't settle it. it. It won't get resolved. It'll just make things worse on the morrow if you're given it. Okay? Neither give place to the devil. If you're angry and sin, and if you go to bed angry, you're giving place unto the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, that which is contrary for the doctrines for us today, this dispensation, contrary to Scripture, okay? But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So, and back in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. His seed remaineth in him. Okay? Um, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Oh, and verse 27 in John, 1 John chapter 2, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. So what we know in 1 John chapter 2, verses 20 and 27, is referring on to the Holy Ghost that is within the saved, born-again believer. Okay? So in verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. That is a reference unto the Lord, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit that dwells within the saved person. Spirit, soul, and body. For his seed remaineth in him. And he, that seed, cannot sin because he is born of God, born again. Born again. So what is this telling us? The Holy Ghost in you will not guide you, lead you, or condone sin. 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Lost people, it's like, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> You're deceived. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He doesn't condone sin. But if we go and confess, Lord, I, I sinned. I shouldn't have done what I did. He's not going to justify sin, but he will forgive you of it. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. I didn't get through my thick head. I didn't stop sinning till I got through my thick head. I wasn't a sinner anymore. Call her the joker. Okay? If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Okay? Lots of people want to come to verse 9 and say that if you're saved, you don't sin anymore. That's not true. That's a lie. Someone who says that is lost. If you're ignorant, that's one thing. But see, that's an ignorance that can't. I, I it can't. Because it's like, wait a minute. 
Okay, I don't want to sin. And I got this idiot telling me if I'm saved, I don't sin anymore. But I, I, I'm sinning. I can't help it. Even if I try. That's where Romans 7 comes into play. Okay? The Lord in you. And this is how we know we are saved. When I sin, when I mess up, when I, you know, when I watch those stupid pet videos or go crazy on the cell phone and look at things I shouldn't, hear things I shouldn't, the Lord in me, he's going to cut me to ribbons. He's going to guide me in all truth. And there's no justification for sin. Okay? There isn't. He's not going to justify it. He'll forgive it if we confess it to him. But forgiving and justifying are two different things. The Lord in you is not going to be okay with you sinning. Okay? We sin every day. That's what Romans chapter 7 is about. In the description box. Okay? Romans chapter 7. Okay? But the Holy Ghost in us, when we have sinned, is going to correct us. Because of why? What saith the scripture in 2 Timothy? Huh? What saith the scripture in 2 Timothy? Come on. Chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect in heart, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why we are to search the scriptures daily. The scriptures that lead us onto our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord in us will guide us on to all truth and his word is truth and he through the word is not going to justify our sinful actions. That's how we know. That's how I know I'm saved. Because I can't justify any of my sins. The Lord in me won't allow it. But the lost false convert. They'll search the scriptures. That they may fall backward. To find a justification for themselves. When the scriptures will not justify you. In your sin. We all mess up. Saved people can fall. But they don't fall away. Saved people can get messed up in doctrinal heresies up the wazoo. Yes, but the Lord will send correction. The Lord will plead with you. Show, plead, and it's not a, <laughs> it's like, let me, let me show you what's wrong. Okay? He'll use a brother. He'll use a sister. But see, that's the thing. We are truly, we who are truly saved, we can't find comfort in our sin in the scriptures. But the lost false convert who reads the same scriptures that you and I do can find comfort in their sin. Hence the problem. And it's the result of a religiosity. A repugnant Christian religiosity. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully this makes sense. Because like I said, in the, in the description box, the verses that we have mentioned at the very beginning of this video will be in the description box. Okay? But this is, I wanted this, to, hopefully, this has been a little bit of anatomy of it. Okay? To give us a, you know, how... How, how could you be reading the scriptures and still be so messed up? Lord willing, I believe we've seen how. I believe we've seen how. How do you know you're saved, Brad? Spirit of truth will lead me, guide me into all truth. And when I'm in sin, when I have sinned, there's no comfort in it. But the only comfort is that if I confess my sins, he is just and faithful to forgive me my sins. And the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, cleanseth us from all sin. That's the comfort. 
that you can find forgiveness for what you've done, not justification. Not justification. And the lost false convert, they seek justification for sin, not forgiveness. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you to those of you who pray for us. I, I hope this helps. I hope this helps some of you. I really do. I really, really do. I hope so. Um, I hope so. I hope so. Thank you for watching this if you do. Be on your guard, brethren. And when that one who you thought was of us is revealed that he isn't of us. Take these things to your understanding. Remember these things. And have pity upon them. Pity them because the truth is that their first love is not the Lord, but the world, the flesh, and the devil. We love you. Please pray for us. Please pray for one another. Brother, thank you. Sister, thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video.